Welcome to the final episode in my Introduction to Capture One Pro tutorial series. If you missed any of the previous episodes, make sure you have a look in the description. They'll all be linked down there. In this episode, we're gonna go through the final two adjustment tabs. That's the export and batch. Since releasing the last video in this series, Capture One have actually released a new version of the software, Capture One 12. There are so many cool new features in it that I really like, but I'm not gonna cover them all today because I wanna keep this video on point, short, teaching you Capture One, not showing you all the new features of the new program. If you wanna find out those new features, I made a video on that already and I'll link to that here. As you'll immediately notice, the most obvious change to Capture One is the user interface looks a little bit different. It's pretty much exactly the same. Um, if you look at the first video in this series where I took you through this very quickly, you'll notice it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, the most obvious difference is the colors are slightly different. Some of the iconography is a little bit different. Um, but like I said, I'm not gonna cover all the new features in this video. If you wanna learn those, make sure you check out the other video. So let's head straight to the output tab and the batch tab. You can find both of those at the end of the adjustment tabs here. Obviously, as I've discussed before, you can customize this area. So if you're not seeing what I am right now, best thing to do would be go to Window, Workspace, and then Default, and everything will be reset to the default, and you'll see it roughly how I have it now. Um, I'll go through the batch one very quickly because there's not much to go through on it. Um, if we select a few images, so if I just hold Shift and select a little range of images, and we make sure we have a process recipe selected, ticked over here, and I either process it by going to here and clicking Process, or I just use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control and D, what you'll see is the images appear in the queue here. I can stop the queue. No, it's not fast enough, so I'll do it again. <laughs> yes, I want to redo it. I can stop the queue. Uh, we can highlight images. I think we can, yeah, we can highlight a few of them. We can delete them if we want to. Um, and then it also has our history of things that we've processed here as well. That's it for the batch queue. There's not really that much to it, so I'm not gonna spend ages going through it. So I'll clear the queue there, and I'm just gonna go and delete the images that I created over here. And I'll explain what happened there next. So that's it for batch, that's really easy. Let's go over to the output tab. This is the more interesting part. Now, you're not gonna have these process recipes here. Um, I have custom created these for this tutorial um, but I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, if you watched all the previous videos, um, then you'll know that one of the things I'm doing in this series is we're going with this kind of scenario of you're in a exotic country doing a photo shoot, a uh, fashion photo shoot covering multiple days and multiple different looks per day. Um, it's just so I can kind of have a complicated scenario of something that we can work with. Um, I'm gonna continue that in this tutorial and this is where the, the output tab and some of the tokens you can use in Capture One become really powerful. Um, so I'll just briefly take you through the window first. At the top here we have our process recipes. Like I said, you're not gonna have the ones I have here, but I'll show you what I've done to create them. Um, we can remove uh, the tool as we can with everything. We can add recipes, uh, we can remove recipes, duplicate them. You know, it's all pretty obvious here. There's no need for me to go through it too much. You can delete them there, you can show, you know, it's obvious you don't need me to go through all of this. You add a new recipe by clicking that, then you can name it, whatever, easy. Um, next, we have the summary of what the process recipe is actually doing. So if I select a recipe here, we can see in the summary all the things it's doing. Now I've done pretty much the same thing for each one here, basically just to keep it fast because I want to process these quickly. Um, but you can change the format to whatever file format you want, the bit rate, the quality, change the ICC profile, uh, and then you can have your scale, which could be either based on all these different parameters here. You could do it based on the width, the height, uh, fixed if you just want it to be like, I don't know why that's going so crazy. Um, ooh, how weird. How weird. What's happening there? Mm, okay, that was odd. Um, so <laughs> maybe it's because I'm doing screen recording. I always find using this program OBS, it takes up quite a lot of computing power. So anyway, 
You can select your format, your quality, ICC profile, um, and then scale, yeah. So you could have it just at 100%, which would be 100% of the, uh, the scale of the image. If it's like a 10,000 pixel wide image, then it'll be 10,000 pixels. Or you can scale it based on the percentage there to whatever. Or you could do it based on uh, a particular width or height or, you know, all this stuff is pretty obvious and self-explanatory. So I'm not gonna go through it too much. And again, open with, you can open with various different programs. Again, pretty obvious. Um, next, we have our output location. Um, I'll get into this in a bit more detail in a minute, so I'll skip that for the minute. Uh, then we have our naming. Again, I'll get through that in a minute when I'm explaining the recipes. And then we have our actual summary. So this just summar summarizes what we've selected up here and everything, summarizes the, the name of the file, everything. And you can click process rather than hitting Command or Control D. Um, I always hit Command or Control D, but if you want to do it here, you can. Right. So let's get to process recipes. This is the most interesting part of it. So if you remember from the previous videos, we had our shoot, as I was just telling you a minute ago, our hypothetical shoot, let's say in Cuba, uh, and they're shooting multiple shoots, uh, multiple days and multiple looks per day. So we have look one, two, and three. We're imagining this is day one, and we have our files in here. Obviously this is not a photo shoot in Cuba, so just ignore the fact that it is just a bottle on a black background. Uh, anyway, so if we go back to here and I go over to here, if, as you can see, oh, let's go back over this way. As you can see, let's say I look one, um, I have rated various images with various star ratings. I've added color tags of red and green, um, and that is all just for demonstration purposes for now. Now, what I then did is I went into session albums, and again, if you remember from previous videos, you can create either smart albums or I don't know the opposite word, so I'm gonna call them dumb albums. Um, you can create a smart album or just a normal album. Um, these up here are smart albums. So these albums are gonna show me all of the green images within all of the uh, the images that are in our, our indexed folders. So that'll be in the session favorites here and in the capture folder. So these are all of our green images from everywhere. These are all images with color tags. So these are green and red images. Then we have all images that are one star or more. Uh, and you can do lots of different things with these. I'm not gonna go into detail here because I have shown you this in a previous episode, but essentially you would just hit smart album, name it, and then decide on whatever parameters you want to do within this window. So let's just delete that one. Yes, I want to delete that. And we'll go back to look one. So I'm now in look one. I've rated a bunch of images and I want to process all of these I want to process all of these and I want to organize them into folders by their color tag. So what I've done is created a process recipe and I've called it color tag. So let's see what it's doing. We can ignore all of this. This is all the easy stuff which you can set up. The interesting part here is what's going on in this section. So firstly, the root folder is going to decide where our images are going to end up when we process them. So we can set this to be any folder on our computer. Um, we could set it to be on our desktop or we could create a custom folder or we could do it wherever we want it to be. Um, if, however, we have it set to being output location, then that means it's gonna default to whatever is set here. If I change this to something else, then it's going to ignore what's set here. Now, as default, this is what Capture One sets up. It will automatically set it up as your root folder being your output location. Okay, that's important to know, um, especially if things aren't going to where you expect them to, just check these two windows. If you're processing files and they're not going where you think they will, check these two areas. Now, having done that, our next part that I've changed here is the subfolder. So we know it's going to our output location and I'll show you where that is. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So we have our little test shoot here and we have our output folder. This is our output folder. That is also known as the output location and that's where our folders are going to go, our files are going to go. Now I've got it set to a subfolder of color tag. So that means that it's gonna have a look at these images and any of them that are green, it'll put into a folder called green, red, red and none, so on, just like that. Now, if you wanna set that up, what you do is you click these three little dots here and you can find all these different tokens. There are tons and tons and tons of them, so I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to show you some of the more interesting ones. So I have dragged up color tag, which you can find here. You click on it, 
drag it up and you can put it into the format area here and that'll be what appears down here. I've already done that, I've already set this up. If you're on Mac, then you can actually search. So if I just delete this, you can actually search color and it will begin to show you a color tag if you know the name of it. Annoyingly on Windows, it doesn't let you do that. So I have to actually find it and drag it up. But anyway, so that's done and I'll just show you what happens. I'll just hit process. So control or command D. The battery is currently stopped because I indicate I did that earlier when I was showing you the queue. So you have to, uh, this warning will always appear when you've done that. And I just have to click yes to carry on with it. So I'll click yes. And we'll see as I go over to here, you see three folders were created. As I said, green, none, and red. Now we can see this uh, process recipe is still running. That's what this means here, which means there's still some things going on in our batch. We can see they're all running there and then are finished. So everything will be here. If I click on green, we can see all the green images, red and none. So that's pretty easy and also extremely useful, but we can do a lot, lot more. So we can do the same thing with star rating. Again, I don't think you need to show me that. The only difference you'll see here is that in the subfolder name, I've got rating rather than color tag. So that is a different token, uh, which allows you to create folders based on the star rating of an image. Next, we have image folder name. Now, do you remember in one of the previous videos, I told you that there are two ways you can index files within Capture One and two kind of types of folders you can create. You can create physical folders on your desktop and then favorite them inside of Capture One so that Capture One indexes them. You can also create virtual albums inside of Capture One, which don't appear anywhere on your computer. They're only inside the session. And that's really important to note for this point. So image folder name is gonna reference the physical folder on the desktop, on the, on the computer rather. So in our Capture One session here, in all of our folders, if you remember, we have our standard uh, session folders, capture, output, selection, trash. I also have example images. That was something I've created myself. Um, so if I export something from the capture folder, if I have the correct process recipe selected, you tick it here to select it, um, it will export that image into the output location with a subfolder of its image folder name. Now in this case, because I'm in the capture folder and that image is located in the capture folder, it's going to create another folder called capture and that's where our image is. However, if as in our example, uh, our example scenario of shooting in an exotic a location like Cuba, uh, if we have been capturing images into the different look folders. So we've been creating a folder for each look. We've then been setting that as our capture folder as we've been shooting and all of the images we capture end up in that folder rather than in the uh, capture folder. Now, if you remember to do that, you can just right click on the folder and go set as capture folder. So if we imagine we've done that, then what we can then do is process these images. So let's just take a selection of those and process these. So we've still got image folder name selected. I process those and you'll see if I go back to the output folder that we now have a folder called look one and we have those images there. Now that's great. That saved us a little bit of time, but what if we wanted just say we wanted the, the greens from look one or we wanted all of the greens, so all of the selects, all of the five stars from all of the looks into folders. Well, we can do that as well. So we have, I've created another process recipe here, which has image folder name first and then color tag. So what you can do, if you wanna do, if you wanna kind of uh, create your folder structure within Capture One, you can do that by using backslash. So what these, what this setup is gonna mean is that the first folder created will be based on the image folder name. So we know that's gonna be either look one, two, or three. The next folder within that is gonna be based on the color tag. So let's see what this does. So if I go back here and we go to one star or more images. So these are, I don't know, we'll go to all color tags. We'll go to all color tags and I'll select all of these images and then hit process. And what you're gonna see is that we're gonna get 
folders created for all of these session favorite folders. So we'll have look one, two, three, keystone, skin color editor, and normalize. That's where all of these images reside. So if I look through these, we see we have look one, two, and three for those. We have keystone, which had those images, skin color editor, which is that one, and normalize, which is uh, these ones. Um, so if I go back to all color tags, so we're gonna have folders for all of those. And then within those folders, it's then gonna go to the color tag. So let's show you what it actually looks like. So this is our output folder again. All of the folders have been created. If I go to look one, we have look one, green and red. So it's organized everything by color tag and then by the image folder name, which is extremely useful. Now let's delete all of these and I'll show you yet another thing we can do. It's all getting pretty obvious now. I think if you look at these, you know what I'm gonna do next. We have image folder name, color and then rating. So we could do the same thing I'll do it again, I'll process it again now. So now it's creating three folders. We're going from the image folder name, which might be look one, two or three or whatever. Then we're going to the color tag and then we're creating more folders based on the star ratings of those. So let's show you that. So now let's go to say look one. We can see it's still working. There's probably not too much left because these um, I purposely made it a very like I said, a very uh, small uh, export recipe, a JPEG at 75% quality and 25% scale. Um, so yeah, so we go to look one and we'll have a look at all the greens, which are all there, and all the reds, which are all there, and the ratings are not there. Why are the ratings not there? <laughs> uh, let's have a look, what have I done here? Mm. Ah, so you see, I must have, while I was preparing this, I must have taken away the rating tag. So to add it in, we add our slash. And then if you're on a Mac, you can just search for rating. But as I'm not, I have to scroll through on Windows and try to find rating, which is there. Drag that up, click OK. Let's just delete these ones here so you can see it actually going in. And I tell you what, I'm also going to do this so you can see the files actually being created. It really is crazy how much processing OBS seems to take. You guys probably can't hear it, um, but my uh, laptop, which I'm running this off, um, reason being that it's 4K and I can record a 4K screen, it's <laughs> the fans are going very loud right now uh, and it would never usually do this just running Capture One. so. That's quite crazy. Ugh, perhaps it was a mistake trying to show you this. So my computer really didn't enjoy doing that. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I think it's it must have something to do with OBS. Um, this is the, the screen recording app here. If anyone knows a better one, do let me know. Um, so anyway, I've processed those images again under the image folder name, color and rating. And now we will see that in look one, we have green and then the star ratings as well, five. Um, if I go to other folders, say at look two, green, we have five, red, we have zero, one, two, three, and four. So there are quite a few different stars for that. Now you can see how useful this could be. If you're doing like 15 different looks in a day and you've got an art director who's rating the images and um, putting color tags on them, being able to export or process all the images in seconds like this, have all these different folders created is so powerful. Um, now, lastly, as I mentioned a minute ago, we have the two different folder types inside of Capture One. We have the physical folders, which you'll actually find on the computer. So if I go to my finder here or Explorer in Windows, um, and I go to, you know, these are the physical folders. We have the capture folder, output, selects, and trash. If I go into the capture folder, you can see we have look one, two, and three, and then all these files here. These are physical folders on our computer. Whereas these folders are not physical folders. They are, oh, sorry, these folders here, the session albums. These are not physical folders. These are virtual albums, virtual folders that I have created within Capture One. If I wanted to, let's say I was organizing my shoot in this way. So rather than creating look one, two, and three as physical folders on the computer, I created them within Capture One. So I created like look one, two, and three, same here. I've just named them example one, two, and three. I created these inside of Capture One. 
I didn't create a physical folder, it's just a virtual folder. If I then use the same process recipe using image folder name, this isn't gonna work because what it's gonna do is it's gonna find where this folder is stored. In this case, it's stored in the capture folder over here. Um, and then it's gonna name the folder after that, which is not what we want. So let me just go back here, delete all of these. And I'm gonna show you what happens. So if I process this under the previous recipe, which is image folder name, color, and then rating, you'll see it creates a capture folder because the image is stored in the capture folder. Inside of there, we have none, because that is a no star, no color tag, and no star rating image. Um, and it's there. So it's, it's done it correctly, but it's not done what we want it to. Um, if we want it to name it by the virtual album, we need to use the token collection name. So same thing, same principle applies, um, but this time we're using collection name. So if I process the image again, control or command D, we'll now see that it's named it correctly under the correct folder. Um, it's not an amazing thing this, but it's very important for you to understand it so that if you're doing uh, virtual albums rather than physical folders, you're still able to name them in the way that you want to. Other than process recipes, there are a few other things that I wanna show you here. Um, so within the process recipe window here, we have adjustments, metadata, and watermark. Uh, within adjustments, this will be what you'll see as default. We have uh, for crop, we have respect crop, or we can ignore crop. Or if you're exporting to a PSD over here, if you have PSD selected, um, then you can also output the crop um, ooh, uh, output the crop to a path in Photoshop, which is quite cool. Um, ignoring crop, I mean, I guess it, it kind of depends what you're doing on set, I suppose. Um, that would just essentially ignore the crop you've applied to the image here and just export it at its full size. Uh, there's lots of useful scenarios for that, but I'll leave it up to you and use it. Um, we then have output sharpening. Uh, I'm not going to delve deeply into this. Again, uh, if you know about printing, then you probably understand the use for all of this. Um, just make sure when you're using these that you use the uh, soft proofing, uh, recipe proofing rather, um, icon up here just so you can see that the sharpening you're applying is correct for what you're intending it. Um, then we have metadata. This I'm definitely not going to go through. Very, very obvious. You can select what metadata you want. Um, only thing that is interesting uh, is for the annotation section here. I believe I mentioned that before when I spoke about annotations. Um, but just in case, when you add annotations to your images, um, so when, um, for example, if you just were to you know, draw a circle around something and do whatever else, when you add annotations to images, you can you have different options for how you export them. Um, so you can export them as a layer or as an overlay or whatever, that's all done here. Um, and then we have watermark, um, really very obvious this, you can either add a text version um, or an image version just go through those options and you can uh, position it uh, using this button and decide on the opacity scale and all that sort of stuff. So that's it for the process recipe window. Um, output location I explained a moment ago and then finally we have output naming. Um, this, if you've now become familiar, which hopefully you have, um, with the token method over here with the subfolder name, um, this is very similar. Um, so with your output naming, you can use tokens and decide how you want your images named. Um, you know, you could do it via rating or color tag or uh, all these other different metadata aspects here that you can use. There's lots of stuff you can do. Um, personally, I tend to leave it just to image name, but that's because of the images I create. For other people, you might want to change this in all sorts of different ways. That's it for this intro to Capture One Pro tutorial series. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to keep the videos nice and short so that you could learn Capture One confidently within a couple hours. Uh, there is a lot more to Capture One though, so make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Um, also, if you've not already purchased Capture One, I am a Capture One affiliate, and within the description, if you click that link, you'll be able to purchase Capture One through that link, and I'll get a very small kickback. That just helps me to kind of create these videos and support this channel. Um, in the immediate future, I'm going to put out some videos on product photography again. So if you've missed any of my previous ones, make sure you check those out. I do videos on creating advertising quality images of products. Um, so if you want to see that, make sure you hit subscribe. If you liked the video today, please hit that thumbs up. And thanks, guys. I'll catch you later.